Hello my dear students very good morning to you all hope you are all doing good thank you so much for the wonderful and beautiful response you are giving for my classes it is giving me utmost happiness and with that happiness today we are going to discuss about an interesting topic estimation of hardness by edta method so in this method we are going to estimate total permanent as well as temporary hardness earlier we have learned that hard water is detected using ebt indicator in the ph range 8 to 10 right so we are going to utilize the same principle here along with the complex formation by edta so before entering into the detailed discussion about the experiment and calculations we should know what is edta and what it is structure so edta is nothing but ethylene diamine tetraacetic acid so it is a hexadentate ligand which means that there are six coordination spots available so these spots will be involved in complex formation so here we go the calcium and magnesium are forming chelate complexes with the edta so these chelate complexes are highly stable and these stability is utilized in the complexometric titration what we are going to do yes we are in need of many solutions for the volumetric analysis so we are now going to prepare the needed solutions for this titrations so first we are in need of edta solution for that we are going to take 4 g of disodium salt of edta not simply edta so we are going to take disodium edta and we are going to make it up to 1000 ml in distilled water so to standardize the edta solution we are in need of a particular standard solution for that we are going to prepare standard hard water and 1 g of calcium carbonate is dissolved in hcl minimum quantity hydrochloric acid and then it is made up to 1000 ml in distilled water so calcium carbonate itself is not soluble in water so hence we are dissolving that in minimum hcl and then making the solution up to 1000 ml in distilled water so after preparing the solution it is clear that 1 ml of standard hard water contains 1 mg of calcium carbonate so we only prepared that solution so we are in need of ammonia buffer to maintain the ph in the range of 8 to 10 for that we are going to take ammonium chloride and ammonium hydroxide in the given quantities and making them up to 1000 ml in distilled water and then ebt indicator so we are going to take ebt indicator dissolved in ethyl alcohol or sometimes we can take ebt indicator mixed with sodium chloride and we will take few pinches to act as an indicator and hard water sample to estimate the hardness total hardness and we are also going to take boiled hard water sample to estimate the permanent hardness present in the sample the principle involved in this is given here so the entire color is wine red so this is the color formed when calcium and magnesium salts are react with ebt indicator in the ph range 8 to 10 so to maintain the ph range 8 to 10 we are adding ammonia buffer so calcium and magnesium ions in the hard water reacts with ebt indicator in this ph range and forms calcium and magnesium ebt complexes so these complexes are wine red in color and these complexes are highly unstable now we are going to titrate these unstable complexes with the edta taken in the burette now the ebt complexes are converted into edta complexes and ebt is given out taken out that is calcium edta and magnesium edta complexes are formed so these complexes are colorless and they are stable as we have discussed that these complexes are chelate in nature hence these complexes are stable and ebt is giving the color to the solution that is the steel blue color so concentrated ebt is dark blue in color and in diluted portions at this ph ranges the color of ebt is steel blue so hence we are seeing the color change from wine red to steel blue during the titration 
so these complex formation is utilized here as the principle and these color changes utilized here to identify the endpoint and title value now we are going to see the same principle in titration that is experiment here you can see the wine red color is converted into steel blue color during the titration the same is done seen during the experiment also so here you can see the edta solution taken in the burette is titrated against the wine red color solution taken in the conical flask that is the conical flask contains water sample then it contains buffer solution and then ebt indicator so it forms wine red color now you can see the person is titrating the color is changing from wine red to steel blue the beautiful color change so to have a clear vision of the color change here in the second picture you can see both the colors now we are going to see how the titrations are carried out so titration 1 which is the standardization of edta which means that we are going to standardize edta solution prepared for that we are going to take edta solution in the burette and 50 ml of standard hot water or any desired volume as you wish for example you can take even 20 ml of standard hot water so based on based on that you can change the calculations otherwise you can take any volume in the pipette and then we are going to add 10 ml of ammonia buffer to maintain the ph and then we are going to take the indicator that is 4 to 5 drops of ebt and then the end point wine red to steel blue so now the titration came to end and we have seen the volume in the burettes reduced to certain level so we don't know that level since we are doing theoretically here so the we are going to consider the volume of edta consumed to be v1 ml you can even take xml whatever you want now we are going to do the second titration so with the water sample so earlier we have taken the standard hot water now we are going to take the water sample in which we are going to estimate the total hardness so burette edta solution pipette 50 ml of given hot water sample and 10 ml of ammonia buffer to maintain the ph 4 to 5 drops of ebt indicator and finally the gorgeous wine red to steel blue color formation now the volume of edta consumed to be v2 ml so we are considering the volume because we don't know hence we are considering this volume now we are going to carry out third titration with the boiled cooled and filtered water sample because we know that temporary hardness producing salts are removed during boiling so here we have boiled the sample cooled and filtered so we have removed the temporary hardness that means we are going to estimate the permanent hardness of the water sample so in the burette we are going to take edta solution in the pipette 50 ml of boiled filtered cooled hard water sample which means that we are going to boil a bulk volume of the hard water sample and we will filter cool and then from that solution we are going to pipette out 50 ml so addition as usual 10 ml of ammonia buffer and indicator 4 to 5 drops of ebt and then here comes the beautiful wine red to steel blue color end point so now we are going to consider the volume of edta consumed to be v3 ml so now all the theoretical calculations were over that is we have identified the title values for all the three titrations so from that we are going to do calculations so how standardization of edta is going to be carried out how total hardness and temporary hardness are calculated so we are going to see everything in calculations so titration 1 so that is the standardization of edta we know that 1 ml of standard hard water is equal to 1 mg of calcium carbonate we have prepared this solution so we clearly knew that 1 ml of standard hard water is equal to 1 mg of calcium carbonate or you can say 1 ml of standard hard water contains 1 mg of calcium carbonate right 
In the first iteration, we have taken 50 ml of standard hard water. So, if 1 ml standard hard water is equivalent to 1 mg of calcium carbonate, then 50 ml of standard hard water is equivalent to 50 mg of calcium carbonate. Not a big calculation. And the same, we have carried out the titration and we have got some value in the burette. That is, we have taken 50 ml of standard hard water and done titration. At the end, we have got the volume of EDTA is V1. So, 50 ml of standard hard water consumes V1 ml of EDTA. So, here you can see in both 1 and 2 equations, the left hand sides are same. So, hence we are going to equate the right hand sides. That is, V1 ml of EDTA consumed is equal to 50 milligram of calcium carbonate equivalent hardness. So, to standardize EDTA, we need actually what is the value for 1 ml of EDTA. So, just we are going to make it for 1 ml of EDTA. So, if V1 ml of EDTA is equivalent to 50 milligram of CaCO3 equivalent hardness, then 1 ml of EDTA is equivalent to 50 by V1 milligram of calcium carbonate equivalent hardness. So, just we have taken V1 and we have divided in the right hand side. So, now the titration 2 estimation of total hardness of sample. Here we have taken 50 ml of water sample and the volume of EDTA consumed is V2 ml. So, 50 ml of given water sample consumes V2 ml of EDTA. Now we are going to write this as V2 into 1 ml of EDTA and we all know that 1 ml of EDTA is equal to 50 by V1 milligram of calcium carbonate. Just substitute 50 by V1 in the previous equation and what we are getting is V2 into 50 by V1 milligram of calcium carbonate. So for 1000 ml we have to calculate because we are going to express the hardness in ppm. So we are in need of 1000 ml of the solution. So we have taken 50 ml. For 1000 ml we have to divide the answer what we have got by 50 and we have to multiply that by 1000. So here you can see in the previous step it is V2 into 50 by V1. So we have to divide that by 50 for making the solution for 1 ml and for making the solution for 1000 ml we have to multiply that by 1000 that is V2 into 50 by V1 into 1000 by 50 that is the solution is that is the value is converted for 1000 ml that is 1000 into V2 by V1 50 50 getting cancelled and 1000 into V2 by V1 milligram of calcium carbonate. So hence total hardness is equal to 1000 into V2 by V1 ppm or you or even we can say that as milligram per liter ok. So 50 ml of water sample consumed V2 ml of EDTA. We are just writing that as V2 into 1 ml of EDTA. For 1 ml of EDTA consumed, we already know that 50 by V1 milligram of calcium carbonate equivalent hardness. So we are going to substitute that in the previous equation. What we are getting is V2 into 50 by V1. So since we have calculated by 50 ml, we don't express that in ppm or milligram per liter. So to express in ppm or milligram per liter, we have to convert that into 1000 ml. So then V2 into 50 by V1 into 1000 by 50. So it becomes 1000 into V2 by V1 and then total hardness is 1000 into V2 by V1 parts per million or milligram per liter. Now we are going to take the boiled filtered water sample. So to estimate the permanent hardness. We have taken 50 ml of the boiled water sample and the volume of EDTA consumed is V3 ml. We are going to write that as V3 into 1 ml of EDTA. We know that 1 ml of EDTA is equal to 50 by V1 milligram. Hence it is V3 into 50 by V1 milligram of calcium carbonate. So we have substituted this in the previous equation and we have got this answer. Now we are going to convert this value for 1000 ml. So hence V3 into 50 by V1 into 1000 by 50. So it becomes 1000 into V3 by V1 milligram of calcium carbonate equivalent hardness. 
and the permanent hardness is 1000 into V3 by V1 ppm or milligram per liter. So we have calculated the total hardness and permanent hardness. So now the temporary hardness is equal to total hardness minus permanent hardness. So total hardness is 1000 into V2 by V1 minus permanent hardness is 1000 into V3 by V1. So after all calculations, we end up with temporary hardness is equal to 1000 into V2 minus V3 by V1 ppm. Okay. So this is how all the types of hardness are estimated. And now some of the basic calculations. 1000 ml of 1 molar EDTA is equivalent to 1000 ml of 1 molar calcium carbonate solution. Okay. Which means that 1000 ml of 1 molar EDTA is equal to 100 gram of calcium carbonate. Which means, so 1 mole calcium carbonate is nothing but 100 gram calcium carbonate. So if we dissolve 100 gram calcium carbonate in 1 liter of water, that is 1000 ml of water, it becomes 1 molar calcium carbonate. So hence, 1000 ml of 1 molar EDTA is equivalent to 100 gram of calcium carbonate. So in the previous step, we have written that for solution. In the second step, we have written that for the amount of calcium carbonate taken. That is the 1 mole of calcium carbonate. So both are same. So if you dissolve 100 gram of calcium carbonate in 1000 ml of water, it is actually 1 molar calcium carbonate solution. So both are equal. And we are going to convert this for 0.01 molar EDTA. So 1000 ml of 0.01 molar EDTA is equivalent to 1 gram of calcium carbonate. That is 1000 milligram of calcium carbonate. So here we have made the solution from 1 ml, 1 molar to 0.01 molar. So simultaneously we have converted the gram also equivalently. And what we are getting is 1 ml of 0.01 molar EDTA is equivalent to 1 milligram of calcium carbonate. So this is the quantity what we need if the problems what we are going to calculate is given in molar concentrations. So thank you so much for the patient listening. If you have any doubt, uh, please feel free to ask me. So have a nice day. Thank you so much. Take care.